All right, welcome to Unit 8, Genetics. Uh, so far in class, we've discussed meiosis just a little bit, uh, and I briefly alluded to the fact that uh, meiosis has a ton of vocabulary associated with it, so I decided to go ahead and make you guys a PowerPoint presentation that details uh, some of the lengthy vocabulary that's going to be used in meiosis. So let's get started. Uh, one of the first words that you're going to come into contact with is this word somatic cell. Uh, a textbook definition of that is going to say a cell that makes up all the body tissue and organs except for gametes. Uh, I'll give you the easy definition. This is any cell in your body. So it does not matter uh, if that is a muscle cell like what we can see here or if this is a nerve cell or a bone cell. Um, all of these are considered to be somatic cells. So the cells of your heart, the cells of your skin, uh, blood cells, all of those are considered to be somatic cells. Uh, now something interesting about them is that they're also called diploid cells or 2N cells and we'll figure out what that is um, later. The next type of cell that you might run into is called a gamete. Uh, gamete cells are reproductive cells. Uh, so men, these are your sperm cells and females, these are your eggs. Uh, these are the only two the only two gametes uh, that we'll find inside of humans. So men, the only gametes that you're going to have are sperm cells. Females, the only gametes that you're going to have are egg cells. Uh, these cells are what we call haploid cells uh, or N cells. And once again, we'll get to what that means at a later time. The whole purpose of this PowerPoint is to help us understand this idea of meiosis. Um, and meiosis is kind of a big, scary thing. There's a lot of steps to it. Uh, it can be really hard, um, but basically what we need to understand is that meiosis is a cellular division process that reduces the number of chromosomes in a cell by half. Uh, so in essence, if a normal cell is 2N, we're going to make cells that are N, um, and these cells will then be called gametes. Uh, so we can look up here. Normally in mitosis, you uh, start first with a cell that is what we call 2N, and then we double those uh, chromosomes and then you end up with, you know, at the very end, you end up with two cells that are what we call 2N. They have their normal complement of chromosomes. Um, in meiosis, you start the exact same way. You duplicate those cells and then through the first division and the second division, you end up with cells that are what we call N or haploid cells. Um, and they have half the normal number of chromosomes. Uh, you also end up with more chromos or more cells. So at the end of meiosis, we're ending with four cells, and at the end of mitosis, we're ending in two cells. Uh, mitosis, this is how our somatic cells reproduce, and then in meiosis, this is where our gametes are created. So I've kind of narrowed everything down for you and you know, put it in easier terms and said, hey, here are three things that you need to know about meiosis. The first thing is that there are two divisions of the cells uh, instead of just one. Uh, the next thing is that they produce gametes. Uh, and remember, gametes are sex cells. Okay. And then the third thing, and we'll figure this out in the next presentation, uh, is that meiosis increases genetic diversity. Uh, that means that it helps us become more diverse as a species because of meiosis. Right? Uh, the next vocabulary word that we need to be familiar with is this word karyotype. The textbook definition of karyotype is the appearance of the chromosomes in a somatic cell of an individual or species with reference to their number, size, shape, yada, yada, yada. Um, the easiest way that I can put this for you uh, to bring it down to a freshman level is it's a picture of all of the chromosomes in your cells. So here uh, you can see the picture of all of the chromosomes in some random human being's uh, cell. These are what all 46 of them will look like. And what you'll notice is that they come in 23 pairs of chromosomes. So we don't number, you know, this chromosome 1, this chromosome 2, this 3, this 4, so on and so forth, all the way till you get to chromosome 46. Uh, instead, we say, that hey, this is chromosome pair 1, chromosome pair 2. Uh, and the reason for that is because you're getting one of these from the male and one of these from the female. Um, this karyotype is going to include two types of chromosomes. Uh, the first type of chromosome is called an autosome. That's all of these guys right here. And then the second type of chromosome is called the sex chromosomes. 
uh, that's going to be your 23rd pair of chromosomes right here. These are the ones that determine whether you're a boy or a girl, and so we call those guys your sex chromosomes. Uh, another term that you're going to hear quite often is a term homologous chromosomes. That's another thing that sounds big and scary. I'm going to try to break it down for you and make it a little bit easier for you. Uh, this prefix homo means the same. Okay, so basically we're looking at same chromosomes, and that's it. Okay, so the textbook definition says chromosomes that have the same length, appearance, and copies of genes, although the alleles may be different. And so here, is a pair of homologous chromosomes. You got this one from dad and this one from mom. Okay, and so these chromosomes are the same length, they have the same genes on them. Uh, you just got these, or this set of genes from mom and this set of genes from dad, and so we call these a homologous pair of chromosomes. All right, so my easy definition is these are the chromosomes that you got from each of your parents paired up. All right, so uh, pair number one, these are homologous chromosomes. Pair number two, these are homologous chromosomes. Pair number three, these are homologous chromosomes. Okay, and you'll notice kind of as you go down the line, they all look uh, very, very similar to each other. That's because they're very close to being the same. All right, the next two words we've already previewed just a little bit. That would be autosomes and chromosomes. Or sorry, autosomes and sex chromosomes. Uh, autosomes are very simple. They are any chromosome that is not a sex chromosome. So all of these guys out here, these are what we call autosomes. Okay. And then sex chromosomes, they're very, very simple. The only two sex chromosomes that you have right here are what we call the 23rd pair of chromosomes. And they're the ones that determine your uh, gender, whether you're a boy or a girl. Now, these longer chromosomes here, uh, on the 23rd pair what we call the X chromosomes and then if you have one that's really short right here we call this guy the Y chromosome and so if you have two X's then you are a girl if you have an X and a Y chromosome on the 23rd pair then you are a boy all right moving right along uh, the next term that we need to understand is this term diploid cell uh, if you think back to some of those root words that we learned at the very beginning of the year, we started with one called di, and we figured out that the prefix di means two. Okay, so based on that alone, we know that this cell has something to do with the number two. Okay, and diploid cells are cells that have two complete sets of chromosomes. And so if we look at this karyotype up here, we've got two chromosomes number one, two chromosome number two, and two chromosome number threes all the way to the 23rd pair and so this is what we would call a diploid cell or a 2N cell because it has two complete sets of chromosomes. Um, all somatic cells are what we call diploid so it doesn't matter once again if it's our muscle cell uh, here or if it's our nerve cell here these guys have what we call 2N uh, chromosomes they have two complete sets they are a diploid cell right so there's going to be uh, several words that sound exactly the same if I say the word diploid if I say the word somatic cell if I say 2 in uh, these are all basically referring to the exact same thing all right now just the opposite of that we also have haploid cells now if you kind of think of HA, it nearly sounds like half. Uh, that's going to give you a very good indicator of what is actually going on here. Haploid cells are cells that only have one uh, complete set of chromosomes. And so if we look at uh, this karyotype, this uh, cell only has one chromosome number one and one chromosome number two, all the way to uh, this 23rd chromosome, which is the Y. Um, gametes are the only cells in our body that are going to be what we call haploid cells. Now, uh, recall from earlier that we said that gametes are sex cells. Okay, so the only ones that we're going to have in our body are the egg and the sperm. Okay, men you'll have the sperm, females you'll have the X. Uh, these cells are what we refer to as N cells. Um, and the 2N and the N, it makes a lot of sense as long as you don't think about it too much. 
Uh, unfortunately, that's just kind of the way that it goes in science sometimes. The less you think about something, the more it actually makes sense. Uh, so here's haploid and diploid put right next to each other. Uh, once again, over here at the diploid, you can see that that counts as 2N. Uh, we have two copies of each chromosome, so two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, all the way till we get to uh, two chromosomes at pair number 23. Uh, this one's color coded, which is why I used it, so that way you can see that you're getting one of these uh, from mom and one of these from dad. Uh, the haploid cell, on the other hand, that's only what we call N. They're only getting one chromosome of each, and so since this one's color coded blue, uh, that means that this is probably the chromosomes coming from a sperm cell because if you'll remember we said that the only haploid cells in your body are gamete cells. All right, and that's going to conclude this video. Thanks.